Hi there, welcome to ProducerPack.com tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at doing some basic mastering in Logic Pro using the multipressor which is a multiband compressor, the linear phase EQ and the adaptive limiter. This tutorial is kind of geared towards just doing some mastering if you've got some tracks you want to send out to a few labels you probably want some mastering on there or if you're sending some, some kind of tracks out to some DJs to get them playing it in the clubs then they'll want to be master tracks really so um, this is what this tutorial is kind of geared towards that just doing your sort of home masters really home mastering so what we've got here is a kind of a track I've made and I've bounced it out as a 24-bit WAV and there's a nice amount of headroom there the the reason why it's better to sort of work in a mastering in a separate project is that you're not getting bogged down with any of the editing and production or tweaking the mix or anything like that you're just dealing with the mastering now and also it's going to save quite a lot of CPU because some of the mastering plugins are a little bit more CPU hungry so it's better to just bounce your mix out 24-bit WAV, import it into a separate project and uh, then get on with a bit of mastering. So here's the track that we're going to be looking at today. <laughs> So it's kind of like an electro house thing that I've made. So what I'm going to start off with is uh, doing a bit of multiband compression and um, then moving on to some EQ and some limiting. We're going to stay pretty subtle with all the sort of effects that we apply to, to the track here. Um, we're not going to dynamically change it too much. If if you feel that you're doing some mastering and you, you feel you need to dynamically kind of change the track quite a lot then maybe it's worth just going back and looking at the mix first because this is just a subtle process for me really just just a kind of subtle amount of multiband compression and EQ and then some limiting and then it's kind of you know ready to be sort of played out and tested really so um this is the multipressor multiband compressor in logic what we're dealing with here really is four compressors all in one and they're all looking after different frequency bands within the audio signal and this means we can apply different amounts of compression to different frequencies which can be a really powerful tool so the first thing that I kind of set when I'm doing multiband compression is the crossover so for this first band here this crossover is kind of determining at what frequency we're going to be applying this first amount of compression to so I'm listening to the track and thinking I probably want to just kind of even off that really low frequency in there um, just sign to smooth out that sub a little bit so what I can do to solo this band as well, just hit the solo button and I'm just hearing this this frequency band now up to 60, from 20 hertz up to 68 hertz, I'm just hearing this and the first thing I do really is I sort of start pulling down the threshold until I start getting a bit of movement up here and the thresholds basically means anything above this, what we pull the threshold down to, anything, any signal that goes above this threshold is going to start getting compressed and well the amount it's going to get compressed is determined by the ratio so the moment it's set around about 3 to 1 which means every 3 dB the signal reaches above the threshold it's going to get compressed by 1 dB typically I'll set this 2 to 1, 3 to 1 you know keep things quite subtle and then next up we've got peak and RMS if we pull the this down to a really small kind of value then it becomes more of a peak compressor and if we move it right up to about 200 comes more of an RMS or root mean square which is just more of an averaged kind of um, like the average level of the signal whereas the peak it's going to be just really compressing those peaks I tend to sort of not mess with this too much just keep it pretty much in the middle the next up we've got the attack and release the attack is just how quickly in milliseconds the compressor is going to start working once it goes above this threshold and the release is like um, how quickly it stops working once it goes back below this threshold so for this you know I'm gonna back off the attack a little bit and maybe just back off the release so the compressor stays it kinda of holds on to the sound for a little bit longer um, once it's dipped below that threshold again that'll probably just about do there and the other thing we, what I've not mentioned actually is the, the gain makeup so when you're compressing the signal um, you might notice a significant sort of change in, in the output there like from compressing it because you're squashing dynamics so it's useful to have this gain makeup to just sort of 
chat, you know, is the signal actually getting significantly boosted or or or, or lowered here? So if we bypass this compressor now, notice that we're not. We probably don't need to really activate that gain makeup too much. We're getting a pretty much similar signal there. So I'll leave that as it is really. And the other thing that we've got here as well is this expander or a downwards expander, which we're not really going to be using in this tutorial. I don't really feel that we need to be using it, but I'll just explain quickly what it does. It works in the opposite way to a compressor in the way that it will expand the signal and it's going to expand basically signals. Anything below the threshold is going to make even quieter. So you can set the threshold and then you can set the amount of kind of like how much the noise is reduced with these ratio and reduction sort of settings here but I don't really feel like we need to do that for, for this kind of mastering we just want to be applying a bit of compression so um, so that's the first band taken care of and then what we can do is sort of unsolo maybe move on to band two which is more where the sort of like the, the kind of main beef of the kick drum is and stuff like that um, and the bass line and whatnot so Move down the pull down the threshold until we start getting a bit of movement. I want too much compression here, really, and I want to back off the attack a little bit here because I find that if I have a too fast attack on like some of the drum sounds, then it can sort of ruin the the transients of them. And I notice I can hear that there's quite a lot of the kick drum there. The main click of the kick is going to be around here, but there's a bit of the kick drum, the click from the kick drum in here, and I don't want to be losing all those little nice transients on the drums. So I'm backing off the attack a little bit back off the release so it kind of holds on to it for a little bit longer bypass see if I need to do a bit of gain makeup maybe just boost it by a little bit boost that sub frequency there and move on to band 3 pull this down until they start getting a bit of movement there so maybe take the attack up because we've got a lot of the kick from the the, the kick drum and um, the sort of this the snare or clap sound and like I was saying before I don't want to start sort of destroying those nice transients and it's going to back off the attack a little bit <clears throat> back the release off as well so it holds on to it for a little bit longer keeping the ratios sort of around about three to one here is pretty much fine Let's maybe boost this gain makeup a little bit. Okay, let's just get the top end done now, really. The sort of hi hats and the sort of just adding maybe a little bit of air to the track. So I might have to pull this threshold down a little bit lower to get a bit of movement here, yeah. Back off the attack a little bit again. It's backing the release off a little bit. Keeping the ratio at 3 to 1. Let's maybe boost it by 1 dB. Then we can just bypass the whole thing. And just boost the signal a bit so you can hear it a bit better. So yeah, like I was saying, it is pretty subtle what we're doing there, but we're just firming up some of the frequencies. So um, the next thing we can do is activate the, um, or load up the linear phase EQ, go to drop down menu, insert drop down menu, EQ, linear phase EQ. Um, and this is pretty much identical to the channel EQ, other than it's, uh, it's much more CPU hungry and it also introduces a bit of latency into the signal. So it's kind of advisable to use it in mastering purposes rather than just like a kind of like a, a project or an arrangement or just production, general production really. Um, and the main difference here between this and the normal channel EQ is that it kind of perfectly preserves the phases of the audio signal. So um, even if you're using quite wild EQ curves in a mastering process. Um, so it's obviously a great tool for mastering really. Something I'm going to do here as well is I'm going to zoom right in because I'm only going to be subtle with the EQ here. I want to be really sort of like zoomed in on what I'm EQing and what I'm boosting and stuff. So
It's going to maybe just give it a little bit of a boost around there. That's where the kick and the sort of the bases and stuff like that. Yeah, so just giving it uh, a little bit more beef around there and just maybe just sort of a little bit more high end just to brighten things up. You know. You know, literally, look, 1.4 dB, 1.4 dB, very subtle kind of differences to the trap, but it's just providing a little bit more kind of like high frequency and just a bit more of a boost around that area. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to add is the uh, the adaptive limiter, uh, which is a really nice limiter. Logic's kind of um, sort of built-in limiter, really. Um, <clears throat> it's quite nice. And what you've got here when you load it up is it's already kind of boosted the signal because the gain by default is sorry is is set to plus three. Um, so it's already boosting the signal. But what you've got here is this is the, the the input level, the input meter, what's going into the limiter. We can boost the actual signal here with the input scale. So if we've got a really quiet mix, we can boost it. Um, and this kind of adds gain before you've applied any sort of limiting or something like that so this can kind of drive the sound a little bit which can be quite nice but can also really just sort of destroy dynamics in, in the sound and also can bring in a bit of distortion so um, notice we're clipping a little bit there as well so um, uh, just if you are going to use the input scale just be quite subtle with it really so I might just drive it a little bit next up you've got the gain so this is like intelligent gain really so this is like the, the readout here it's going to be adding that to the um it's going to be adding 4 db where there's space in the track to add 4 db this is quite an intelligent limiter that's why it's called the adaptive limiter in that way um and then next up we've got the out ceiling and i think this explains why we're getting a little bit of clipping here is because the out ceiling is this controls the mix and just ensures the mix never climbs above whatever we set it to here so if we set this to kind of point two then this should stop clipping here really it just means the mix is never going to go above 0.2 db and we're not really losing any considerable sort of level just by dropping it 0.2 db there it just means it ensures it's just not going to clip on any systems um, and then we've got a couple of extra options here with the adaptive limiter so you can set a mode and basically the, the Optifit is like a, a gentler type of limiting um, whereas the no over is more of a brick wall sort of type limiter so I tend to keep it on no over you've got the look ahead here as well so the, actually you've got one of these on the multipressor which I didn't really mention uh, but this is kind of like this will look ahead to the signal incoming into the limiter and adjust it according to that so you know, you might as well use if it's on there. It's quite a nice feature to have. Um, so you can just slide that over a little bit, maybe to 20 milliseconds, 24 milliseconds. Uh, I always keep the remove DC ticked. Uh, this just filters like really low frequencies um, that might be introduced from using hardware and stuff like that. But I mean, I just, which is not the case with this tune, but I just tend to keep it ticked anyway. Um, and that's about it really, that's the master done. So um, what I'm going to do now is boost the signal a little bit uh, and just kind of like bypass and then unbypass all the plugins so you can hear the sort of effect that we've kind of made to the sound. <clears throat> If you have any questions about this tutorial then drop us a message and also if there's any suggestions on tutorials moving forwards then please get in touch and let us know also. Alright, thanks for listening. See you guys again soon. Cheers. Bye.